Hello everyone. Today, today's webinar will be discussing about the how to speed your Magento store. So let's start. So uh, before that, let me introduce myself. I am a Magento developer working in Sync, and I am also a blogger uh, in CodeTheater.com. If you like to uh, give your blog in CodeTheater, you can also apply on that. So um, you can also follow me in LinkedIn in the given URL. So the basic points are uh, how to configure uh, um, basic configuration of your Magento, how to um, do cache management with Vanish Cache, module coding structure, and how to schedule your tasks with clone job, uh, server configuration. Basic configuration. So basic configuration is the simple configuration you need to do before making the store in production. Uh, that to keep in mind, uh, you need to uh, turn, your, turn on your cache, never use JS bundling, enable your uh, CSS and JavaScript minify, use varnish cache, uh, and turn, turn on production mode. So about the varnish cache, I'll, I'll go detail. Uh, let me go one by one first. So uh, the caching is uh, Magento caching is that whenever we are in uh, dev developer mode, we do all our development uh, with disabling our cache so that uh, it reflects uh, directly to our Magento store. So sometimes we forget to enable it after going to pro um, production mode. So is always keep in mind to make it uh, make the cache enable so that uh, your store works fine. Never use uh, JS bundling. The thing is that JS bundling is a specific feature for Magento 2. It supports to do cut down number of HTTP requests to load the pages uh, grouping of JavaScript file. Uh, what it does, if you enable that one, you can see here. How to enable so if you enable that one it will create a single javascript file uh, which will merge all the uh, js file and create a single file at that moment that single file that size may increase from 5 to 10 mb or even more than that if you if you have lots of js file uh, and plugins and all that so uh, at that time if one page uh, one js file is more than 5 to 10 mb whenever you are loading your uh, website first time, so everything is loaded. At that moment, that JS file will be also loaded because uh, for the specific uh, page, there may be JS on that separate JS file, but since it has merged all the JS file, so it must be loaded. So when it, when it loads, that it will create a, uh, that total size of the page will, will be very big because there will be a products and there will be a, a images of front front end images will be there so what so total number of total size may be increased more than 20 mb on a, or more than that so when you are loading that one so at that time the file will be website will be very slow so you should not enable that one how to enab uh, enable the css and the js file so uh, it is under Configuration advanced uh, del developer. You can see the uh, there. The, in, here is the minified JavaScript file and the uh, minified CSS file. So it should be enabled because when you are writing a CSS on the or the JavaScript file, we we created lots of space. Uh, maybe uh, for uh, fast when you are writing that file, maybe you have skipped something to remove your space or you haven't entered because when you are writing a JS, you give space. And again, you are writing writing your code. So when you uh, will when you will enable this one, it will minify the JS file and the CSS file. So the size of the file will be very small, and it will be easy to load the page. So production mode. Uh, these are the commands to go to uh, to make the production mode. So first of all, you you have to run um, the command that set production, uh, php bin slash magento 
deploys to module and all that production mode after uh, we have two steps to make it production we skip the uh, di compile or we enable uh, without skipping we make a production so if you skip the uh, di compile then again you have to run the dl compile separately uh, other, otherwise uh, the compilation will not be done so uh, and if you don't skip uh, the di compile uh, at the same time of making the production it will automatically compile uh, dl compile will run so after that you have to run the static content deploy in this uh, in this command it will uh, generate all the static files like js and css and all that uh, in the you know, uh, static uh, folder uh, to load it um, faster and uh, while running the static content deploy uh, we also specify the store if you don't specify the store uh, it will uh, default store will be loaded uh, let's say our my default store is uh, english so en underscore uh, us that is our code for english uh, us english so that will be loaded but if your store is um, you are having multiple store by default it will not um, static folder will not contain all the files in your static folder so it's better to run your store also giving your store code like en underscore nz for new zealand en underscore us for us english so all this uh, code be uh, written should should be written in static content deploy after that you if you run that one you'll see that uh, in shell it will run and deploy uh, creating all the js and css file after after creating after running the static content deploy you have to uh, run the indexing so indexing uh, is one more uh, big job because if you have lots of product while creating indexing it will take it will take a small amount of time because it uh, creates the pricing and all that so if you uh, run the indexing it may take some time but you, uh, you have to run that one after indexing you have to flush the cache also so if you will do all this uh, if you run all this command then the, then your store will be in production mode so it will uh, it will it will work fine after that all this command so uh, how to configure the vanish cache so there are um, few steps to configure the vanish cache this step should be done before production mode because it's a big topic and uh, big to and i am explaining it separately uh, first it should be configured in one uh, one schedule manual to uh, where you'll find that um, store configuration advanced system full cache paging uh, full cache page under that you'll uh, you have to specify that um, vanish cache because by default magento provide built-in cache so uh, by default magento uh, works with built-in cache so if you are uh, if you if you think that uh, you will start uh, you will your store should run with vanish cache you have to put that uh, the vanish cache after the configuration the vanish is need to be changed in the port so that and the first time you should call for a vanish then the apache server because uh, whenever you know, from from your when you are hitting an, your website it calls for an imagine to so uh, to to change the port first you have to do that it should hit your vanish and you should you should get if you get if it gets the file from there it should display from there and otherwise it will call for in magento uh, i'll explain it afterwards so how to configure your port so i'm using uh, uh, in my in my uh, i have installed my vanish in my server so this is the file uh, where the configuration should be done uh, default.vcl so uh, you, if you'll open this file you'll see that uh, there's a commented uh, like this way this is this is commented that that will be commented the backend default so you have to enable this one so my i've digging i've given the default port you, you can see the a08 and the hosting uh, i have given so you have to write it in this way uh, to uh, uh, for the um, to change the port of the varnish and the hosting after changing this you have to go for apache uh, configuration also so i am using centos in my server so you can see uh, when you will uh, we'll open the configuration file of apache you will find lots of uh, things so there will be a commented line uh, that 
listen so this is the port where you have to change so you have to, you have to uncomment this one and you have to write a port uh, which port is uh, applied in varnish so i have given the 808 so you have to apply it uh, here 808 so varnish functionality so uh, as i've said first time when uh, a user is going to a website they they type something www.xyz.com when they type that one so they go to web server so what a web server do it directly goes to um, if your varnish is not configured then what he'll do he'll directly go to magento and he'll get the data and he'll display to you so if you install the varnish that will be middle way to communicate with uh, your web server and the magento so whenever you will type something it will call for it from a varnish so it will hit that to the varnish port if it gets its result then it's okay it will display to your web server but if it does not get any uh, response so it will go varnish will trigger to your apache server and it will uh, it will get the data from there and from uh, from there it will uh, get data and from varnish again it will reflect back to your web server so when the second time you if you uh, hit uh, for that url so that stores the data in your varnish so uh, so for, for the second time it will get the data from varnish only and it will not call for a magento in this way it um, the process is more faster for using using varnish so coding structure this is required uh, when you are planning your extension to to be in your marketplace uh, there are a uh, few things you have to keep in mind the php coding standard php coding standard uh, php, uh, PHP coding standard. the magento recommends um, PR, psr1 and uh, psr2 the basic configuration uh, basic coding standard standard where it specifies how to declare your functions and uh, classes and it also specifies that if you if your file is dot php i mean uh, if there is no js or html is written it, there is only php uh, codes are written then that that file should not be ended as so, uh, we ended the php that that tag should not be there so it should be uh, already open for a php file and also you have to uh, specify your declaration and all that and uh, how to uh, like uh, your function should be in camel case and how to write your uh, write your class class name should contain uh, the path of the uh, class and the uh, class uh, and the file name the, that uh, that structure should it follow uh, the model should contain a should not contain duplicate code because uh, if uh, when you are writing your uh, when you are creating your extension uh, we do something we we copy paste from your um, magento core file and we paste it in our um, extension at that time it will not block you means your extension will work fine but whenever uh, you'll plan to take that extension to your marketplace then imagine to check that one that uh, the, you have copied or any, anything from magento or not so if you have copied that one it will uh, it will reject your extension so uh, there are a few steps to um, to check how uh, to check your extension like uh, php core sniffer tool uh, this uh, by this uh, command you can check the cores are correct or not so yeah, yeah well, but before that you have to install the php uh, php uh, sniffer in your magento uh, magento server which you will uh, get from your Git, uh, github so you have to install that and you, you can see that my magento is installed in where the world was this is this is my extension b2b b2b image so you have to give the path of your extension and before that you have to specify and 
you have to uh, uh, do this one vendor bin php css and also you can see that i i've written a uh, severity 10 severity 10 means uh, when you are uploading your magento extension to marketplace so if if it will it will check only the severity 10 only if it fails for severity 10 then your extension is not allowed so minimum criteria is severity 10 it should pass the severity 10 so if you if you run this command and if you get any um, error in your file this this php .css text file you can write any any of one of you like to have like so uh, here it will uh, when you run this one the uh, error will come to the uh, come to this uh, file and you can check that what are the errors so if you if you'll uh, get any errors on severity 10 that means your extension is not allowed to your market marketplace it has not passed the minimum uh, severity also so you uh, with different severity also with different severity also you can check uh, but severity 10 should be passed that should uh, while running this command no error should be come should come this uh, on this uh, command Uh, and uh, PHP code uh, beautify and fixes. Uh, this command is that uh, when we run our uh, codes, uh, we uh, we do something that extra spaces are there. And uh, let's say you are writing a if if condition, you have to give a space after if you have to give a space, then you have to start a bracket. But uh, maybe if, uh, when you are writing, you, you have forgotten to give all that space and all that so if you run run this command what are the basic uh, basic uh, things the, uh, which can create uh, error it will automatically fix that one with this con but it is not that's not uh, it but uh, it will not fix all the errors it will uh, fix few of them errors and the rest of them you have to uh, you have to fix by yourself only So PHP copy uh, copy paste director. In this command, what it does, uh, as I've said before also, that you should not copy uh, the core uh, codes from the core file. So if you run this command, you'll get the error of your extension that it is copied or not. So uh, this one also uh, for this command, you you have to install one more uh, PHP copy director, which you will find in github you have to install this and after that you have to uh, you have to run this command so what it does whenever you will run you see the magento, my magento is installed in kishore uh, kishore k so if i run this one so whole magento will be detected so you make uh, in this file you'll get lots of error but you have to find out that your extension you have get got any error for your extension or not if there is no error for your extension then it's okay but uh, if you if there is any uh, error in your extension then you have to fix that one so the easiest way is that uh, let's say that you have uh, created a file so you have copied that one uh, and you have uh, pasted to your uh, custom file means anything something uh, something dot php file so that constructor you are defining it is same as the php uh, magento base constructor uh, constructor from where you have copied so uh, one one solution is that you have to uh, rename the uh, variable name and you have to rename the position by doing that one also you can fix that error So, uh, how to create? A, uh, 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 why we, we do cron job? So you can see that in in our Magen, uh, in Magento 2, um, there's no there's for indexing you have to enter into your shell and you have to do the indexing. So cron job is that it will support you to do that one. So if you, let's say uh, you have a uh, you have a Magento store with lots of product. 
so you uh, if you are changing your price and all that so sometimes it does not reflect because of your indexing only so if you if you think that uh, i'm i have done my changes of my product price and it is reflect, not reflecting and you will go enter it into your shell and you will run that command so if you run that command at that time uh, it may take time and for that command also uh, it may hamper your store uh, for permission issue or may or may, for different reason but uh, if you uh, do the cron job for that let's say uh, when the traffic is less you are doing that one so you, you, you set up a cron which will run at midnight of uh, 2 a.m so when the 2 uh, comes your indexing will start so uh, there will be less traffic so uh, there will be no problem with your customer also so we just set up your cron and uh, you uh, and tells when to run that one and uh, you uh, at at midnight every at every 2 a.m it will run and your indexing will be done so uh, you can see uh, these are the uh, you will find your indexing on syst uh, store configuration system and here you will find that uh, cron by default magento has index index cron default cron and you can see i have created one more cron that is recurring recurring order cron name so you can uh, create your own cron also so uh, but the fields are same uh, these are the fields uh, general schedule event uh, so this one is the uh, all these uh, times are in minute so if if you uh, if you say that general schedule uh, every 5 minutes uh, here you can see the 15 is done that in, that means every 12 minutes that will run so if you, if it recurs for 1 minute you can specify in the one if you recurs 10 whatever you like have to you have to specify it there so uh, here it is written 15 that means every 15 minutes this cron will run and general uh, uh, scheduler I had of I had for this one is that uh, let's say at 15 minutes the cron has been scheduled to run so 1 to 15 on 15 it is running but um, then the uh, scheduler check that when to run the second one so that interval will be 20 so after 15 it when uh, when the 20 20 minute will come it will check that uh, is there any cron to run in upcoming time so it will check okay after every 15 minute uh, it should run so that um, past you will calculate the past time plus 15 minutes it will um, create and it will uh, save in his database so that uh, so that the upcoming time uh, it, it upcoming time will be declared where uh, on that time it, the cron will run Miss missed uh, if not uh, if not run within so th uh, this will uh, detect uh, that if if a uh, cron does not run uh, here you can see the 15 minutes is given if your cron is not not run within 15 minutes within 15 not in 15 minutes but within 15 minutes if your cron is not run that will be declared as um, missed so uh, it, it will uh, fail. it will go under fail history time so history cleanup it specifies that uh, on what interval your cron uh, cron data will clean so the history will be clean in every 10, 10 minutes session history lifetime this uh, this is uh, the record where uh, in this uh, table all the records are uh, kept when the cron is run and what what the status of the uh, cron the so success uh, history lifetime it defines that on what time uh, after what time the data will should clean so uh, this is the minute you can see 10080 so it specifies the minute that on what minute uh, that data should be cleaned failed history uh, lifetime is same so uh, whenever the uh, cron is failed it goes to fill um, uh, fill database so it keeps the record so uh, so that you can check that cron is run or not so th this data also will clean 
within this time if, uh, you have to specify the time time when the uh, your data will be clean use separate um, use separate process so this one is uh, specific for custom cron when you're creating a uh, cron you have to specify your name of the cron if you use the default that means it will follow the magento only but if you create a uh, custom cron as you said as you, as you can see that this is my uh, custom cron i, I have uh, created so for this uh, this one is required uh, i'll say that this cron will be used for separate process so uh, to run this one um, you have to uh, uh, by specific command um, uh, cron uh, and you can see uh, that command then by this uh, cron command uh, with giving this name you can run specific cron so for this it is required server configuration so uh, yeah, the operating should be uh, operating system should be linux and uh, and the uh, the the, uh, the server should be linux and operating si uh, system you can choose any one of them like centos ubuntu and all that but uh, i prefer to use centos because it's easy to handle and you can manage it easily memory requirement by uh, you can see in magento doc that magento always says that uh, for magento there should be minimum 2 gb ram but uh, i have seen that for 2 gb ram magento hardly works so minimum it should be have it should have 8 gb ram to perform it faster because uh, if you are uh, for small store it's, it's no problem you you can have 2 or 4 gb but if you have if you are planning with if your store is big so always uh, you have to minimum uh, your ram should be 4 gb so that it it runs smoothly and faster otherwise ram is one of the main cost to uh, slow um, to make slower of your store compose uh, you should install composer also mm, the composer is required you know, when uh, let's say you have multiple extension to uh, with the help of composer you can update your extension uh, and also uh, you can update your magento with the help of composer so composer should be installed in your server aperture uh, aperture server uh, whenever you are uh, planning to uh, do your magento whenever you are planning to do your magento store so take the latest aperture server whatever it is present because uh, with the magento latest one it is always supposed uh, supports magento uh, aperture server so uh, now the magento is 2.2.6 uh, so for that uh, uh, it's mysql supports 5.7 5 and php supports 7.1.x uh, the cell should be configured for security purpose ssl because uh, when you if your store is not ssl certified that your client will not come and they uh, uh, they will check the, uh, the website is secure or not so your store always should be secured for that ssl should be configured mail server should also be configured to have a communication with mail so uh, if it is not configured then you can use that smt server for mail and varnish should be installed uh, as i have said earlier also that how to install varnish so varnish should be installed and it should be configured it should be configured um, properly so uh, now is is time for question and answer so i have seen the few question has arise uh, i will answer two of them and uh, and rest of rest of the question will will be in webinar this is a blog and that will be mail to you also if you have registered for webinar so the first concept, um, first concept, uh, question is uh, is there any cache apart from vanish cache uh, yes there is a uh, cache that's called meme cache 
uh, is a uh, distributed memory caching system you can check uh, in devdog how to configure that one it also uses for magento and one more question is if my store is uh, how to how to develop uh, if my store how to develop if my store is in production mode the thing is that when the magento is in production mode uh, so you don't we always says that we don't develop in our production mode because if you do something uh, some anything can happen let's say if you're uh, doing your db work and you have deleted something then it will affect the front end or admin so we always prefer not to work in developing uh, production mode but there should be a different um, different environment where you can do your development so uh, that's in the staging environment you do all your development after that you upload your uh, before uploading your code to your production you just uh, make your production mode in your maintenance mode where you have to specify your ip so that you can only the person to access that one uh, and other person will see that magento is an under under development mode so uh, always enable your development mode before uh, developing in your know, live environment and you deploy your code and everything and you just enable your um, and disable your development mode so in this way you can uh, do your work in your production mode so thank you very much for attending the webinar uh, if you are looking for magento integration do visit our appsecurity.com um, to automation of on uh, to automation your business thank uh, thank you again